It's 4.30 and this is WKYT This Morning. The current bid of a one-of-a-kind shoes worn by a former UK basketball player is more than $2,000. Find out how, whose shoes they are and where the proceeds are going. Ahead on WKYT This Morning. Today, students and faculty at the University of Kentucky will remember a student who was killed a year ago. Madison County High School leaders came up with an unusual way to raise money for charity. Their idea, coming up this morning on WKYT. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you after a fabulous weekend. Welcome in to WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. Hope everyone out there had a great weekend. What a beautiful weekend yeah. we had. Did you I, have a good one? It did. I don't know that I remember two days in a row. <laughs> I beautiful. I mean, it was just fabulous. And, uh, you know, the bonus is that we get a beautiful Monday as well. Meteorologist Micah Harris is in our first alert weather center. Yeah, and believe it or not, we're actually going to be warmer today and tomorrow. And yesterday we hit 80 degrees. So get ready for some real warmth sliding on in here. Live Sky Camera, there's your shot outside early this morning. We are in the 40s and 50s. Actually, it doesn't feel all that bad out and about. And today's forecast at 80 three degrees very warm out and about as we travel off into your afternoon how long do we hold on to it does it go up from here or down from here i'll show you that in your forecast coming up right, easy enough to enjoy thank you let's get to the news madison county zumba instructors found a new way to raise money for charity madison central high school leaders hosted a zumbathon yesterday and all of the proceeds go to the daniel ellis foundation Officer Ellis, as you remember, died in the line of duty last year. WKYT's Hillary Thornton talked to Officer Ellis's widow. Inside of Madison Central High School, each step and every turn making a difference in memory of fallen Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis. Alexis, you know, approached and said, everybody's on board, we're going to do a Zumbathon. I said, you know, I'm not very athletic. <laughs> 5K Zumbathon, but it's been great, and just people have been able to come together and just celebrate Daniel's life, raise money to give back to Madison County, and have a really good time. The Sunday Zumbathon, just the most recent example of a community coming together to remember badge number 457, all while supporting the foundation started by his widow, dedicated to helping others in his memory. Another example of the community coming together, doing something to. Uh, um, to be a blessing to Katie and to her foundation. And her foundation is already doing great things. And this event special in itself, but even more so with it happening at a place that continues to rally around the wife of the fallen officer. My work family has been amazing. Um, work is the one place that feels really normal, that I enjoy coming, and um, I wouldn't trade any of them. They're the best. A place of normalcy for the proud officer's wife, a place stepping up for their assistant principal. Katie um, is very dear to our heart. Madison Central faculty and staff taking an activity many of them do regularly, using it to help out one of their own. You, you know, work um, together closely like we do, you become a family. A couple hours of exercise serving as another example of this community's heart. Richmond's awesome. Richmond is a wonderful place. I'm originally from Columbus, Ohio, but I will be from Richmond, Kentucky forever. In Madison County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Organizers say the Zumbathon brought in more than $500 for the foundation. It has been a year since a University of Kentucky student was shot and killed, and the UK community continues to mourn the loss of Jonathan Kruger. To honor his memory, the UK School of Journalism is hosting a memorial today at noon. Kruger was a photographer for the Kentucky Colonel. Last month, the judge set a trial date for the three men charged with Kruger's death. Efrian Diaz, Justin Smith, and Roman Gonzalez are all charged with murder. The trial for all three starts March 6, 2017. A Bourbon County road was closed for hours yesterday evening after a deadly crash. State police say a SUV on Lexington Road in Paris hit a bicyclist yesterday afternoon. The crash happened near Evergreen Mem Memory Gardens. The bicyclist died at the scene. Troopers have not released the victim's name at this time. Now, investigators have not yet said if they are filing any charges against the driver of the SUV. A Southern Kentucky inmate who's been on the run since last month is now back behind bars. The Knox County Sheriff's Office says deputies found 24-year-old Ronald, excuse me, Ronald Gray in a wooded area in the Boone Height community. 
Deputies say Gray and another inmate jumped out of a transport van March 28th while going from the Knox County Jail to the Leslie County Jail. Officials caught the other inmate. Two deputies were fired after that incident. State police have identified the woman killed in a Saturday Eastern Kentucky fire. The coroner says 50 year old Kathy Rena Marshall Kirkland died in an apartment fire in Floyd County on Highway 777. The cause of the fire and the cause of death are still under investigation. State police are waiting for autopsy results. Fire broke out at a Lexington factory yesterday evening. Firefighters say one of the vats at the Dixie Cup factory on Harbison Road caught fire. They say they were able to put out the flames pretty quickly, but crews stayed on the scene for a couple of hours to ventilate the building and cool down the machine. And dozens of firefighters in eastern Kentucky have been battling forest fires over the weekend. Crews are blaming the dry weather for the spike in fires. Firefighters are asking people to wait to burn anything until after 6 o'clock at night or until we get more rain. They also suggest keeping a hose nearby if you're burning anything outdoors. And then if the wind's really blowing, then you should probably maybe hold off a day or so till it starts raining some, uh, because it didn't take but a second for it to hit the hills and and be a, a big full-blown hill forest fire with thousands of acres involved. Firefighters say you should only burn natural products, no tires or aerosols or things like paint cans. They were custom made for former UK basketball player Willie Colley Stein. Now, the one of a kind basketball shoes are being auctioned off to help a children's hospital. A Lexington shoe artist designed the pair for Colley Stein, painted in memory of a nine year old fan who died from brain cancer. Colley Stein befriended Blake Hunley and spent time with him when he was at UK. WKYT's Caitlin Center tells us what the money from the shoes will be used for. Most people know the story about uh, Willie and little Blake Hunley that passed away last year. The Big Blue Nation watched as a special bond formed between Willie Coley Stein and nine year old fan Blake Hundley. Hundley was diagnosed with brain cancer when he was just six years old. Just meeting the kid, you would never know that he had brain cancer. You know, I mean, you had no, had no idea. The former UK star didn't forget his little buddy after Hundley lost his battle with cancer last May. You know, Willie sent me the shoes. It's like, hey, let's do a Team Blake, you know, something kind of theme like that. And he's going to wear them in a the game. The local shoe artist showed off the autographed kicks at an event Sunday afternoon, but the bidding is actually happening online. Billy Hobbs put the one of a kind autographed shoes worn by Collie Stein in a game against the Minnesota Timberwolves on eBay to raise money for the Cozare Children's Hospital, where Hunley received his treatment. In my mind at the beginning, I thought 2000 was like the ceiling. I was like, that would be great if we could raise that much money for it. The bidding reached two grand within hours. The UK standout not forgetting the BBN or his biggest fan. He genuinely cares about, like, him and, him and uh, Blake were really close, you know, and that's a lot of people don't know that. They just think that these guys go out and do photo ops, but he, you know, him and little Blake texted each other back and forth during the Final Four. Hub says he and Collie Stein hope to do this fundraiser annually. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. You can find a link to the auction on our website, WKYT.com. UK students, staff, and alumni ran to raise money for student scholarships yesterday. University of Kentucky Alumni Association hosted the new event, Sprint for Scholarships. It was a 5K at Cold Stream Park. The money raised yesterday goes directly to student scholarships. Organizers say the 5K will help future and current students pay for a college education. We realized there was a definite need for an increase of funds for scholarships, so we decided to try to do our part in that. So this is our first annual event to try to engage the community and be together with the alumni community in general and raise money. And organizers expect that 5K to become an annual event. Dozens of kids got to enjoy the nice weather and play baseball this weekend for a chance to go to the MLB All-Star Game. The South Lexington Youth Baseball League hosted the city's first MLB pitch, hit, and run competition yesterday. The kids said the event was all about having fun. WKYT photojournalist Tyler Ross has the story. Three swings, all you get, guys. I've actually dreamed about that, playing on the big field, you know. It's just all of the environment. As far as we know, it's the first time any local league here in Lexington has put this on. It's uh, the MLB pitch, hit, and run event. They had us running, who could run, and hit, and pitch. 
I usually like hitting off pitchers because I um, haven't hit off a tee since tee ball, so it was a little different. Um, they're hitting three um, baseballs off a tee, uh, and then we measure their farthest one, and it's accuracy and distance, so they have to hit it straight and far. Um, and then they throw six pitches to a strike zone, and however many hit out of six, that gives them a score. Um, and then they'll run from second to home, and we'll time that, and then that puts them in a level. Uh, they would get a set, certain amount of points for that as well. I take a deep breath and everything, and I just imagine myself in my happy place, and I just, you know, swing. It's a high school swing there, dude. Nice. It's a lot more funner because you know you have your friend, even more friends around you and stuff, and you got, and it's not as much pressure on you. I came here like I, I'm probably not gonna win or anything, and I got a really high score, and I'm really impressed with myself. And. Uh, Everyone else did really good too. This is just having fun and, and some kids going to get to travel a little bit and play some more. Winners from each age group division will advance to the sectional championship. From there, they will go to the team championship and then the national finals. The finals will be at this year's All-Star Game in July. Not All a bad right. prize. Yeah, huh? Exactly. And a lot of people took advantage of this great weather for, to do a lot of good, as you see as oh, well yeah, from uh, many beautiful. of our stories this morning. 441 is the time. WKYT this morning is just getting started on your Monday. One out of every 68 children has autism. An early diagnosis it is advantageous in helping an autistic child. On Moms Every Day, we'll hear from a mom who can attest to that when we come back. We had a pretty warm weekend, and you know what? We do it all over again today and tomorrow, except it's going to be a little bit warmer in the forecast. And I'm going to show you those numbers coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. We are looking across the way and seeing those temperatures there in the 50s, a couple of 60s, a couple of 40s. I mean, you name it. And we're looking out and about it, and it doesn't feel all that bad as you step out the door this morning. We're 49 degrees here in London. Look at 48 in Mount Sterling. Look, when you step out the door, this is a pretty good feel. Check out Jackson coming in in the mid 60s. And we're at 442 in the morning. That just shows you how warm it's going to be later on today. 46 now in Danville and Boyle County, and that takes you off into Perryville and also Junction City. Work your way into my friends in Springfield. Yeah, just north of you guys, Willisburg, and just to the east of you guys, MacVille community. Things are looking just fine there. And western zones this morning. Up north, Frankfurt, Maysville, Cynthiana, Williamstown, go off into Sadieville and also Peaks Mill. Uh, we're holding on to the 50s and coming in at 53 degrees in Lexington. Yesterday, we actually finished off. In the uh, 80s for many locations, right around 80 degrees here in Lexington as we finish off there at the Bluegrass Airport. We're looking across the region and absolutely nothing going on. And that's with satellite and radar on there. So that means clouds trying to show up. I'm going to zoom out and you can't really see much going on except back to the west of us. Now that system is actually moving north. Watch the loop on this. It's not really making its way eastbound. Some of the clouds are. Uh, that's just because of the wind, but for the most part, these showers and thunderstorms back toward the west of us are heading northbound. And they're not really going to affect us anytime soon. We got to wait toward Wednesday, Thursday to actually get some rain off in there. So all in all, it's a pretty good looking forecast in store the next couple of days. Like I said, we finished off around 80 degrees yesterday. And, and so you're saying, well, can we get any, any warmer than that as we travel off through the next couple of days? Check this out, 83 degrees in your forecast later on this afternoon. That's like your May uh, heading off into July feel. That is definitely not around here. And, and look, we're going to continue to travel off into tomorrow, the next 24 hours, and actually see another number just like that. So we are very, very warm the next 48 hours. Short sleeves, shorts, that is your best bet as you take off early this morning because this afternoon is going to be extremely warm. So we go from 50 degrees to 83. That's a 33 degree swing. It's kind of hard to do this time of year, but we're doing it today and for tomorrow. Heading off toward 8 p.m. If you have any plans, heading out to dinner out on the patio where it's 78 degrees, heading through the night right around 67 by 11 p.m. and midnight. That's an awesome feel for you late nighters. Heading into 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, back in the 50s for most, pretty much where we are right now. Maybe a little bit warmer as we travel off into tomorrow morning. Let's talk about today's talkers. Obviously, it's going to be about the heat. 80s in the forecast. I mean, that, that's not only today, the next 48 hours. A lot of people will be talking about the heat. I went out to Keeneland yesterday with all the guys on the weather team and some from the National Weather Service, and we had a blast. But everybody that we spoke to, it was all about the heat, how warm it was outside, but it was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. 
wasn't all that bad. Sunshine in full swing, too. That's today and tomorrow. But once we hit Wednesday, off into, let's see, Friday. I would say Saturday, it starts to fade away. Saturday looks pretty good. But that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday time frame, that's when we look to get some of that rain off in here. Here's your seven-day forecast. Two days in a row, here we go, with some low to mid 80s, and then we look toward Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'd say Friday's your best bet at rain. Wednesday and Thursday, kind of small chances, 30, 40%, but now we're looking at 60% chance of rain on Friday, guys. Showers and a few rumbles of thunder, and we drop it back down to the 70s as we head towards your Saturday and Sunday. Think about it. Drop it back down to yeah. the 70s, you know? <laughs> Not pump it up, but drop it back down to the 70s. Very warm air in places for Good sure. Good perspective, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. All right. It's a good place to Cannot be. Cannot complain. Yeah. yeah. Time this morning is 446. It isn't easy hearing that a child has autism. But confirming the diagnosis early on can help you and your child. Hear from a mom who's been through the struggle of finding out her child has autism on Moms Every Day. We now know that one out of every 68 children is on the autism spectrum. We also know that early intervention is key for these kids' well-being. We connected with a Michigan mom whose son has autism, and she says accepting the diagnosis and then taking action has been crucial for her family. Hi, I'm Kathy B., and my son Dominic is almost 11, and he was diagnosed with autism when he was two and a half and then diagnosed with ADHD when he was three. When we found out he was significantly delayed, I cried my eyes out. And then when I found out he had autism, that was pretty hard. It took me about two weeks feeling sorry for myself. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be an advocate. I'm gonna help my child. It was more challenging before we knew what was going on. You know, once he got diagnosed with autism, then he could he, he get speech therapy, occupational therapy at school. Outside of school, he gets music therapy, speech therapy, he's in uh, special needs religious educa uh, education. You know, there's kids with all different disabilities out there and, you know, we're just like any other parent, just our child just happens to have autism. For more ways to make mom's life easier, visit MomsEveryDay.com. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. Well, it certainly is a challenge uh, for fa families dealing with it. The time this morning is 448, and WKYT this morning is on the air with the latest. We have a lot more news coming right up. April 15th may have passed, but if you haven't filed your taxes, you are in luck. The reason why when we come back. Welcome back into WKYT this morning and a good morning to you. It is 4.53. Democratic presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are battling for votes in New York. And Republican Donald Trump is doubling down on his attacks. Brooke Silva Braga has the latest from Brooklyn. We're going to win this thing without being dependent on Wall Street or the big money interests. Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders may be trailing Hillary Clinton by 10 points in the New York primary. That's the gap in the latest CBS News battleground tracker poll, but the Vermont senator received rock star treatment at a massive Brooklyn rally. I think he's the people's president of today. The two candidates crisscrossed New York City's five boroughs Sunday. Hillary Clinton salsa danced at a block party in Washington Heights, then campaigned in Staten Island. I am sick and tired of people running for president who view our country through a negative lens. Tuesday's primary is considered crucial not only for the two Democratic candidates, but also for the Republican frontrunner. We have to win by big numbers because we have a system that's absolutely rigged. Polls show Donald Trump holding a commanding lead in New York over Ted Cruz and John Kasich. A big win on Tuesday would give him the bulk of delegates and put him on a narrow path to the 1237 he needs to clinch the Republican nomination. Brooke Silva Braggett for CBS News, New York. Now five more eastern states hold contest on April 26. All right, uh, interesting time of year, certainly. And of course, uh, Kentucky's primary coming up on uh, May 17th, by the way. Time this morning is 4.55 right now. And just ahead, a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your morning forecast. That's coming up. It's all about the temperatures the next couple of days in the 80s. We're going to go over that with another two hours of WKYT News coming up in just a couple of minutes.